Hello everyone, it is the first Monday of July, which should mean that we're here to talk about the cool space and astronomy news that happened in June. Unfortunately, that's not exactly what we're going to be doing today, because I have been sick. <laughs> now, it's just a cold, but I, maybe I'm just a baby, maybe it was a bad cold, I don't know, maybe it was the flu, but it wasn't COVID, I took a test, two tests actually. In any case, I started getting sick last Tuesday. And today is Monday, and it's the first day that I feel even semi-functional. <laughs> so, like, scripting and recording and editing a news video was not happening over the last six days. But I still wanted to hop on here and give you guys a little bit of an update, because it's been a little bit since I've made a video. So I guess with getting sick, it was kind of like both good timing and bad timing, because I'm actually, next Monday, starting a new job. Yay! <laughs> No, I'm not going to like give you guys the details on it because it's not really related to this channel or what I um, do for science communication, um, but I basically be doing research and development. But um, yeah, y'all know that it's been kind of a wild roller coaster of a year for me, like the high of graduating with my PhD last, last summer, and then like job hunting, and then finding my dream job, and then that turning into a little bit of a nightmare and then having to quit and then having to repay them their relocation, which is like corporations do not relocate you cheaply. And like, and then job hunting again. And I don't know if any of y'all have job hunted lately, but it, it's an insane market. It like, it's just so frustrating. I sent out over 200 applications. I just like ghosted by everyone and their mother, just form rejections. I felt like I had just nothing, nothing to offer. And like, I have a fucking PhD. I am a veteran. I like, I'm trained on to operate nuclear reactors. Like I, I know I can do shit, but it just felt like nobody was interested. And it didn't help that like, I was looking for a lot of jobs in tech and obviously tech is just not, not ideal for hunting for a job right now. Luckily, I have a very supportive fiance and I have a lot of savings. So like, I wasn't like, you know, going to be homeless or anything, but it was still very stressful. And um, just some real low points. This is actually a video that I took. It was actually the day that I got the bill from <laughs> from my last job about how much I was like the actual amount I was gonna have to pay back for that reload. And um, probably in the worst top ten days of my life. Um, and <laughs> the only reason I even have a video of this is because I don't normally like sit around videoing myself when I cry. I'm not that much of an influencer. <laughs> not influence at all. But I was like trying to find a silver lining and I was like, hey, I'll take this like video of myself crying and I can use it as like a, as a joke, like a meme for like TikTok. And then after, after I took it, I looked at it and I was like, there is no text in the world I can put over this that is going to make it funny. Like this is clearly a woman at a very, very low point in her life. And I was. Um, so yeah, so I'm really excited to be starting a new job. But like, these last two weeks before I start, I was excited to have like all this free time where I wasn't going to have to be worrying about job hunting or what the future was. I was just going to like have some time to relax and, you know, work on stuff that I wanted to work on and just like chill. And instead I spent like a week of it just like half comatose from like a haze of pain and drugs. By drugs, I mean over-the-counter medications that were taken according to the directions on the packet, just to be clear. So in that sense, it was kind of bad timing, but it was good timing in the sense that I hadn't started my job yet. And like, yeah, so I got to take that time to just completely be a lump and rest and heal myself as much as I can. I can't imagine having to work during that time. It, yeah, I was really <laughs> not doing well. But we're back on the upswing. We've got a week until I start my new job. And um yeah, I'm also finishing up um, working with my fiance for wedding planning. We are about three months, oh my god, three and a half months away from our wedding. Yay! I'm really excited. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty fun. What else? I don't know. I guess my life's kind of boring. <laughs> Anyway, now that I am going to be starting a new job, I am still going to be able to do this channel, um, so that's good, um, but obviously I'm not going to have as much time, um, and so probably going to be fewer videos going forward. Um, I, <laughs> I love making videos, They're, it just takes so much time. I have way more ideas than I have time and energy to make them. 
So I, I think I want to stick with trying to do a monthly news video and then probably one other video per month. So I guess that comes out to two videos per month. We'll see. That's going to be my goal going forward. Also, if you watch shorts on YouTube, you probably have noticed that I've been posting shorts. So this is a series that I started back in May that I started on TikTok. That's a year of space facts. And so these are just little like quick, fun space facts every day for a year. <laughs> <laughs> which is like kind of intimidating. Why did I sign myself up to do something every day for a year? I actually had like a nice like buffer going, right? Because like you don't want to be making these on the day that they go up. That's insanely stressful. But then of course being sick has like depleted that buffer. So now I'm going to have to build it back up again. But, but we're going to get there. I hopefully can think of 365 fun space packs. I'm through like 65 right now or something. It's, it's been a lot of fun. But yes, yeah, so I've been doing that. So um, there's a playlist on my channel. If you've missed those, you can go check them out. They're like less than 30 seconds each. So it's just a quick hit. Yes, and while today is supposed to be news video day, like I said, I'm not going to be able to do that whole video, but I do have a list of the stories I would have talked about had I done that. So I will link those in the description below along with the press releases that are associated with them. So it's not as fun to go read a press release and I know it might be confusing, but that is, that's what I have for you this month. Um, and I will read for you the list of those stories because y'all, it was a pretty crazy month for space and astronomy. Like this past week in particular, there was like three huge news stories and I was like, I want to talk about these and I can't think straight. Like it was not, it was not fun, but anyway. Okay. So a whole bunch of new exoplanet names have been officially approved by the IAU. They did this like whole contest last year and the results just came out this month. So there's like, I don't know how many, but there's a bunch of new exoplanet names and some of them are pretty cool. So the first GD Boost T results for TRAPPIST 1C. So we talked about TRAPPIST 1B a couple months ago. Now TRAPPIST 1C, they looked for an atmosphere and this one, so TRAPPIST 1B is really hot and they weren't expecting to find one. TRAPPIST 1C, there was hope that it would have an atmosphere and it didn't. So that's like kind of bad news. Um, some of the other TRAPPIST planets still might have atmospheres, but like this one was kind of, we thought might be borderline and it fell on the no atmosphere side. So that's a, a little bit of bad news. JWST also saw methyl cations in space for the first time which are a really important organic um, carbon compounds, so that was cool. NASA is that one year analog Mars mission began, so they basically lock four analog astronauts in this like Mars habitat here on Earth so that they can simulate um, as if they were living on Mars. Of course, the big pulsar timing array gravitational waves announcement. So all of these different pulsar timing array collaborations like all across the world were using pulsars throughout the galaxy as a telescope and they detected gravitational waves that have like wavelengths of light years long. It's just mind boggling and very cool. We also saw the neutrino background of the Milky Way for the first time. Y'all, that is so cool. Like, you know, there's this like very iconic image of the Milky Way and like all of these different wavelength bands, but those are all light and now we can add neutrinos onto it. <laughs> that was from Ice Cube. And then um, Ingenuity, the Mars helicopter, went up for a flight back in April, and then when it came back down, comms were totally lost with Perseverance, and they've been down since, but they just reestablished communications like a couple days ago, so Mars helicopter is alive. And then finally, ESA's big Euclid mission just launched successfully on Saturday. This is going to look for the mysteries of dark matter and dark energy in the universe. Um, so very exciting to see that launch and hopefully we'll start getting some cool signs from that eventually. So that is all the news I have for y'all. Uh, like I said, I will leave the links um, for the press releases for all of that down below. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, and I hope you are all having a wonderful 4th of July if you are in the US and otherwise just a great Monday wherever you're at. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you again soon. Bye.